the idea of having this session on sketching is to make you understand the importance of shades and shadows in sketching all of you have been doing pencil sketches and some other medium you have been using to for sketching but uh, to make whatever you sketch a realistic sketch it is very important to understand the effect of light and the kind of effect light produces by way of shade and shadow in the objects that you are sketching most of the time we do it out of intuition we imagine and we do it out of intuition but actually there are certain principles based on which shade and shadow can be drawn so i am going to talk about show you demonstrate to you these principles and also talk about it so that you get an idea but once again these theories you will learn only if you do if you practically apply these theories as you sketch the theories are very very simple so i will first demonstrate and you watch the demonstration and try to sketch along with me it's a page of a digital sketchbook i hope you can see that your hand is very important when you sketch you know that so we are trying to understand the importance of shade and shadow so let us try and understand what is shade and what is shadow for that see i'll just draw a line i'm saying that this is a stick now if light is coming from one direction let us say from the from my right light is coming so there will be a shadow like this right if yes. if light is coming from another direction there will be a shadow like this so a shadow is indicative of the direction of light which is falling on the stick correct so if this is the tip this is the direction of light can you see the direction of light yes sir so that is why this tip is the shadow of the tip of the stick and if the stick is perfectly vertical to the ground that is if this angle is 90 degree and if we assume that light is coming at 45 degree this angle is 45 degree okay so what is the nature of the shadow anybody who can tell me what is the nature of the shadow if this is 45 degree and this is 90 degree anything that can that you can relate to the geometry that you know what does this geometric representation tell you if this angle is 45 degree and the stick is at 90 degree to the ground what does it tell you the next angle will be 45 degree okay next angle will be 45 degree what else the length of the shadow equals the length of the stick exactly that is very important that is what you have to understand that if direction of light is at 45 degree to the axis of the object then the length of the shadow will be equal to the height of the object right so let me now erase all this and start again just hang on i'm just taking some textures to show you so please wait if this is a plane this is a plane okay can you see this can you see what i am drawing yes sir yes sir so, can you yes, see uh, i have drawn a plane correct a rectangular plane all right if behind this plane light is coming the shadow of the plane will be like this correct i don't to draw like this in your sketchbook draw a vertical plane first we drew one vertical stick now we are drawing a vertical plane and we are drawing the shadow assuming that light is coming at 45 degree so the length of the shadow will be equal to the height of the the plane correct can you see the what i have sketched light is coming coming from behind this say piece of cardboard or a plywood or whatever is kept can you see the sketch have you drawn like this in your sketchbook yes sir okay so what i have drawn is a shadow because the shadow is very dark 
okay so but on the plane because light is coming from behind i have drawn very lightly shading correct so very simple definition is that this is called shade that is on the surface of the object where there light where light is not falling that is called shade and what is formed because the object is restricting light from movement is called shadow is it clear yes sir do you understand what is shade and shadow now i am going to draw a cube draw a cube in your sketchbook and i am assuming that light is coming from my right from top so this area will be shaded you also sketch this in your sketchbook or time sketch both these surfaces of the cube will not receive any light a cube two surfaces are not receiving light light is falling on top of the cube correct so what will be the nature of the shadow if light is coming at 45 degree shadow will be like this can you draw the shadow watch what i am doing and try to draw the shadow the way i am drawing shadow will always be darker than the shade shaded portion is on the surface of the cube whereas shadow is on the ground shadow should be dark shade should be lighter have you sketched this yes okay so look at this shadow very closely and you will notice that one edge this vertical edge has got this angular shadow each edge has got a shadow okay and there is one shadow which is at 45 degree but the other shadow one edge the top edge of the cube has got a shadow which is parallel parallel to the edge so there are two shadows of edges which are parallel to the edge of the cube and two are at angles so this means that anything that is vertical to the ground will have an angular shadow anything that is parallel to the ground will have a shadow parallel to that edge is it clear uh. Okay so now what we will do is we'll try we'll try and draw a shadow of a cylinder see i am only drawing the a disk i am drawing a disk and this is the top of the cylinder let us see all right now if there is only a disk in the air like this supposing there is a coin in the air there is a disk in there and if you assume that light is coming at 45 degree the shadow will be forming somewhere here correct see can you draw this if there is a disk suspended in air the shadow will be like this isn't it is it clear to you have you drawn Ah uh, yes sir so if a disk is like this shadow will be like this because the angle of light is at 45 degree now if this disk it is not a disk if it is a cylinder it will look somewhat like this correct it will look like this that means 
the shadow of the entire cylinder will be just connection to the connection of the base to the this disc very simple it will come like a straight line and become curved at the edge i will draw one more a bigger one a taller one so that it will be clearer to you see for example this is a cylinder and this is the top shadow of the top so if shadow of the top will be a exactly like the top of the cylinder and how do you draw now the shadow of the cylinder you simply draw connect this if you connect like this you get two lines this shows that the light light is coming at 45 degree and you have got the shadow of the top here and rest of the shadow will be simply connecting that disc to the base of the cylinder is it clear yes sir okay now since light is coming from the right there will be lot of light on the right side of the cylinder but there will be less light on this so the shade will be gradual it will not be one sharp line but it will become gradual because it is a curved surface correct in a curved surface the shade will be gradual so do this so it will look darker at the edge and will look lighter to as you go towards the center of the cylinder to look somewhat like this correct okay so is it clear shadow of a cylinder you change the direction of light you will get different types of shadows the shadow direction will change the shade shade position on the cylinder will also change is it clear yes sir okay so let us now take a look at what will be the nature of a pyramid now here is a pyramid i have drawn and i am assuming that light is coming from let us say from my left so if light is coming from left this surface will have shade the surface will be darker and this surface also will not receive as much light so this also will be shaded maybe lighter shade the intensity of shade may be less here you can control all this i have to do it digitally but since you have you have pencil in your hand with pressure of your pencil you will be able to control can you see this pyramid now so how do you draw the shadow of the pyramid shadow of the pyramid is very simple you take the tip of top of the pyramid light coming at 45 degree will take up there will be a point on the ground which will be the tip you just connect one corner of the pyramid and the other corner of the pyramid to this tip and you will get the shadow of a pyramid that means anything which is a pyramid pyramid shape for example a cone or a pyramid with triangle as a base or a square as a base or a pentagon as a base hexagon as a base all will have similar looking shadow why because the tip will be a one point and you have to connect the base to that particular point is it clear i have shown you one example can you all see the shadow of the pyramid yes sir yes sir so this is let me say this is a triangular base pyramid you should try and draw all the pyramids triangle base square base pentagon base hexagon base octagon base and try to draw the shadows in your sketchbook later not now but you can do it as a homework so let us proceed now if this is clear to you okay now let us see what happens to a sphere or a ball draw a ball or a sphere a circle perfect circle in your sketchbook and let me say that light is coming from the left so what will happen is if you visualize you know that there will be a curve along the ball because light will fall in a curved surface curved manner on the ball surface and then you will have shaded region like this but what is interesting is 
because it is a curved surface the ball will look darker at the edges and the shadow will be lighter at towards the center so whenever you are asked to draw a shadow of a sphere or a curved surface you will be drawing the shade like the shade will be like this have you drawn this yes sir okay so now what will be the nature of the shadow see there is a kind of an ellipse on the surface if you look at it very carefully there is an elliptical surface on the sphere which is actually receiving lot of light so that ellipse if you draw on the ground behind the sphere that will become the shadow on the ground draw that ellipse touching the sphere at one point see this now yes sir so this is the fundamental principle of drawing shadows and shade i have explained to you all types of objects correct rectilinear objects curved objects cylinder cone everything will have the same principles applied assume the direction of light at 45 degree and draw the shade and shadow if this much is clear this is the method you use whenever you sketch anything any object from nature or an object from uh, a live object uh, inanimate object whatever you draw you draw the outline and then first you have to decide is the direction of light you should never sketch without deciding the direction of light okay so now what we will do is i will go to the presentation and we will look at some of the some more theory about uh, sketching Yes, sir. Okay. This is a what you see on the screen is it's a pen and ink pen and ink sketch, and this is done at about almost at about twelve o'clock, twelve o'clock, eleven around eleven or twelve in the afternoon, and this is at Kovalam Beach. Anybody knows this? Anybody has seen this? Kovalam Beach. There is a lighthouse, and there is a gate which goes up to the lighthouse. So this was done almost two or three years back at Kovalam Beach. so here if you look at this sketch carefully if you understand the direction of light it is possible to figure out what time the sketch is done you understood see if you are aware of the direction of light it is very easy to tell what time a photograph is taken what time of the day a photograph is taken it is difficult to figure out what time of night a photograph is taken but it is very easy to figure out what time of the day a photograph is taken by closely studying the photograph similarly if you look at this sketch if you look at that gate the roof of the gate the shadow is very small correct it is just below the roof that means light is coming directly from top and even on the lighthouse there is very little shadow just little shade is there otherwise there is no shadow at all that means it is noon time around 12 o'clock so that very little shadow is formed so now let us look at this whole method which we have been we, you have tried just now and we we'll look at the theory behind this so what do you see here there is sun which is at infinity and in physics you have learned that we always assume that light coming from the sun the light rays are parallel to each other isn't it in physics you have learned this so in when it comes to drawing the second assumption is that if you want to do a good sketch first of all light which is coming from sun is parallel to each other the rays second that the light is striking at 45 degree to the ground plane so when you assume this you can very easily draw the shadow because the height of the shadow will be equal to the height of the object so this is a simple principle once again showing to you light rays shade and shadow of a of a cube okay so now this is again you have tried this this will be the shadow of a ball 
So you can see here shade and shadow. Shadow is what is formed on the surface because light is obstructed. Shade is actually part of the object itself. All right, this is what you will do as homework. Imagine different types of regular objects. Regular objects, which cylinder, cube, sphere, and so on, different types of pyramids, and assume different direction of light, not just one direction of light. Take a cylinder and try to draw shadows using four different directions of light, not in the same sketch. Four different sketch of cylinder. In each sketch, the direction of light will be different. If you practice like this, with little bit of practice, you will become perfect at visualizing the shadows as well as shade. And every time you sketch, you assume that light is coming at forty-five degree, so that the length of the shadow becomes equal to the height of the object. Okay. So this is a homework that you will do, and you will send it images. And then you can also visualize complex objects like this. But now imagine those objects, those complex objects. How will shadows be formed? So, whatever those complex objects are, you must try to draw shadows of the objects. Now, in complex objects, you will notice one thing: the shadow also falls on the surface of the object. Partly shadow is falling on the surface, but the principle is always the same: whether the shadow falls on the surface of the object or surface of the ground, the principle is always the same. So here is another complex object. You can also create some complex objects. Your own vision. Create complex objects like this and try to draw shade and shadow of the objects. See, if you are going to be designer, this object could easily be identified as a building also. Correct? It's only a question of giving it a scale. The object which is on the right side, it could be a building. It could be a ten-story building. So, what is the importance of shadows in buildings? Importance of shadows in buildings is shadows create comfort zones. So when you design a building, you should have a very good idea of the movement of sun from the east to west on on the site where you are designing the building. So building design is always done with reference to the movement of the sun, so that through design you are able to create very good shadow zones in the site or within the building, so as to create comfort condition. This is especially very very important in our climate conditions, especially in India. Shadows are extremely important in Indian climatic conditions when you design buildings. Now, here is another example of what we can call still life study, which is a wonderful example of shading. Very good example of shade and shadow. So you can you should practice all this. Unless you practice, do lot of sketches, at least two or three sketches every day, you will not become perfect in visualizing and sketching. Sketching and visualizing. and drawing is not something which you do only when you are told to do if i am telling you to do something and if you are doing it that is not enough this should be your hobby to keep sketching and keep drawing and visualizing light and shade so that your vision becomes more and more perfect exactly like singers you can't become a remain a good singer if you don't practice every day you have to get up every day and get get into some practice at least one one or one or two hours every day if you want to keep your voice in good shape so similarly if you want to keep your vision and the skill of sketching in good shape you have to practice every day for one or two hours using different objects like this but every time you draw remember that you should give lot of importance to direction of light so can you now see this image of a tree and a man walking with a dog yes sir Yes. so we are coming outdoors till now we were looking at just objects geometric objects how to sketch outdoor same principle is the same you have to assume the direction of light so when you assume the direction of light you are also assuming what time of the day it is see if the direction of light is almost parallel to the ground then either it could be morning or evening if the angle is very low angle it means either it is morning and the light is coming either from the east or from the west and if it is at about 45 degree who can tell me what could be the time of the day what would be the time of the day at which 45 degree at at 45 degree the sunshine will fall on the surface of the earth 
approximate time who will tell 9 of 10 yes exactly 9 or 10 only 9 or 10 uh, then uh, 3 or yes between 3 and 4 so between 9 and 10 and 3 and 4 so why we assume that 45 degree is good because if you notice when you go out next time and there is a sunny day look at the shadows in the environment shadows look the best at uh, between 9 and 10 and between 3 and 4 especially when it comes to buildings the shadows on building surfaces look very good at between 9 to 10 and 3 to 4 and they look very good if you are able easily able to visualize the building so that is why this rule is also used it is easy to draw because at 45 degree the height and length you can equalize while sketching but if you are drawing a early morning scene or a late evening scene you have to appro- appropriately you have to change the direction of light now see this is principle which you can easily apply while sketching anything for example nature sketching what do you think is the direction of or say the time of the day when this is sketched is there any clue in this it could be either early in the morning or late in the evening because the sky looks very clouded right there are no sharp shadows anywhere if there was sun in the sky there would have been some sharp shadow here so a sketch also tells you not only the mood of the sketch but also the time of the sketch now this is this direction of light especially becomes very useful when you are drawing portrait and people because it gives you depth in the sketch when you draw people if you don't get depth in their figures it looks flat so when you draw people or trees or natural objects a lot of importance need to be given for shading on the object because without shading you will not get three dimensional depth in the object they will all look like comic characters flat on the surface of the paper but the moment you draw the outline and start doing shading uh, and highlighting the shaded areas it looks three dimensional in nature see another wonderful example of a beautiful sketch very simple sketch but you can see how deep how much depth is there in the sketch and done very simply using shading as a technique it could be a scene one of these days people stuck in boat about to drown correct flood around mm. and this is not sketch from a photograph this is just imagination this was a question in the examination that people are stuck in a boat the boat is about to about to drown and people are panicky to to sketch the scene this is imagination and look at this in the imagination of the person who has sketched how beautifully water splashing is shown waves are shown and the panic not only that panic in the face of the people everything is shown and very carefully the sketch is done but the emphasis on shading has created wonderful effect of light and shade in the whole sketch okay so let us look at some of this theory behind why we should learn all this one of the important reason why as architects you should have a very good understanding of shade and shadow is because you design buildings and the buildings have are always fixed on ground the moment you design a building and construct it it remains fixed on the ground so because it is fixed on the ground it has to be designed fundamentally based on the principle of movement of the sun from sunrise to the sunset time and you should know the different directions of light see today we can create air conditioning and create comfort in our house but if you look at old traditional buildings very old buildings old houses and palaces they were all designed based on the fundamental principles of movement of the sun and especially this movement of the sun becomes very crucial in very hot dry climate if you have gone to middle east if you go to dubai if you go to see the traditional houses not the the modern day bangalows and villas of dubai but if you ever get a chance you should visit 
Dubai and all those Middle East countries, they were always populated in olden times, the desert areas. The kind of buildings they used to design were like this. They had wonderful control over sunshine so that you get very comfortable areas indoor as well as shadow zones in the building. So this is one reason why we have to, you have to pay attention to understanding shade and shadow because good design of spaces can happen only if you understand shade and shadow in the built environment. So shade and shadow understanding also means that you must know the source of light. Where is the source of light? If the source of light is directly above, the shadow will be directly below the object. And as the source of light keeps moving from one end to the other end in the horizon, the shadow also keeps shifting. You can experiment this indoor also by using a table lamp. How by moving the table lamp, you can study how shadow changes. This is a very simple experiment you can do. You can take objects and put on your study table and switch off all lights, get a table lamp, focus lamp, and try to throw light on the object from different angles and study the sh shadows which are formed because of the direction, change of direction of light. So this is what we just now discussed. The step two, which we did was to understand qualities of shade and shadow created by obstruction of the light. So we tried sphere. Now there are some names to different types of shadows and shades. They are called highlight, half tone, form shadow, reflected light, cast shadow and so on. In this image you can see the sphere surface is marked by A, B, C, D, E, F. There are six types of effects that you can create by shading when you sketch. The six type of effects have got definite names. A is called highlight. Highlight is the area where there is absolutely no shading. That means you can see sharp light there, as you can see in this sphere. B is called half tone, where there is slight shading starts happening. And C is the form shadow. That means you can almost make out the edge of the shadow or shadow zone. Or C is that point from where the shadow starts getting formed on the ground. If you look at the sphere, if you look at the C zone, C zone is responsible for formation of the circular shadow edge on the ground. Then D is called form shadow core where it is darker and darker and darker. F is finally the shadow which is on the ground, whereas E is the darkest surface on the edge or the surface of the sphere. I hope this is clear to you. Okay, so this is where once you are interested in architecture, once you get involved in studying architecture, you have to become very, very conscious about the living environment, your own surroundings, different places which you visit, and look at the sun, look at the building and look at the sun, and try to figure out what time it is, what kind of shadows are getting formed now, and at five o'clock, what will be the shadow? You should be able to visualize it. It is very important for you to visualize what type of, if you like a particular spot at a particular time, how the shadow will change at a different time is something which you should learn to visualize and sketch. So this is called understanding the profile of the shadow. And the profile of the shadow continuously changes depending upon the way the source of light is moving, that is the sun is moving. It keeps changing direction and this change of direction this dynamic change of direction of shadow is something we must learn to visualize. You should be able to visualize that as I change the source of light, how the direction of the shadow will keep changing. So, because, why? Because the building is always fixed. Building doesn't move. It is the shadow which moves and your design should have spaces which comes in shadow zone to create comfortable environment. Now look at this. This I am just showing you an example of a model made for a house, or let us say a small house. And if it is evening time, see evening, afternoon sunshine is very, very hot. So the way it is created, the object is made, there is an outdoor open space 
on this side of the bell form which is under shadow during afternoon so this is this is a fundamental or the simple method of visualizing a belt form with respect to the direction of light so that you are able to visualize which part should be under shadow and shade now look at some examples like this you will see hundreds of examples on the internet and also when you go outdoor you, you would be experiencing these kind of environment and this only shows how sensitive the designer has been to create to be able to create this kind of wonderful shadow effect because of design these are all designs by architects so as a designer or as an architect it becomes extremely important to understand the direction of sun direction of sun and the way light plays with different surfaces of your built form so i am showing you some examples of how you can sketch these days it is very difficult to go out i don't know you are able to go outdoors not maybe not because of because of rain or on a sunny day if you are able to go outdoor you should do a lot of outdoor sketching but i'll give you another example a very simple example of outdoor sketching is you can sit at home and go to any part of the world this is a sketch i did last sunday by going to singapore sitting in front of my pc so you know you have google something called google street view so you can very easily switch on your pc or your mobile phone go on google street view go go to any part of the world go to the street fix your view and look and sketch so this has become a hobby nowadays for most of us who like to sketch because we are not able to go outdoor and sketch so what we are doing is at least once a week we visit different parts of the world and do sketching like this so last week we had gone to singapore next week we are planning to go to chicago so this way you are able to visit all the architectural monuments all, all over the world and sketch them without physically going there this has been one big advantage of uh, the corona times most of the architects and people who like to sketch are doing this sitting at home instead of wasting time exploring so that you don't lose touch with your sketching abilities so this is a sketch which i did last week uh using pen and ink as a medium this is the week before that went to rome there's a water fountain called trevi water fountain there so this is a sketch done in pencil at rome this is the week before that went to venice the city of venice with crayon so sitting at home you can explore different materials crayons pencils pen and ink watercolor and go to different parts of the world and sketch the more you sketch and more realistic they become nobody can even uh, sort of should be able to make out that you have not been to these places so this is advantage today technology offers so finally just to conclude see why this is important once again i am explaining to you why this is important why learning to sketch all the time is extremely important because this helps you understand the relationship of light and shade with the built form built form is what you visualize and they are pretty geometrical in shape though curvilinear or or using straight lines but how they behave in sunshine and light is something to be experienced in your mind first and reproduce in the form of sketch so is this clear to all of you yes sir yes sir i hope the presentation was visible and in any case uh, i will be sharing the recording with you so you will be able to see the whole thing all over again all right so